I told you I would probably taste this uh, strawberry sparkling that uh, Mr. Tano gave me the other day and I'm hungry again so here I am this is uh, lunchtime late lunch and aperitif time so I'm going to try bonjour Lisa we are uh, we are going to try it at last I uh, just can't resist um, welcome back everyone I just can't resist so I am opening it the strawberry mousse sparkling mousse in French we oui, you're back to Stan um, so I checked out a little bit of information uh, so this uh, sparkling comes from Miyagi prefecture I'm going to try and show you where it is located Miyagi prefecture is uh, at the north of Japan just above um, Fukushima Attends, hold on a second. I think this is not... Oh, okay. Maybe you can see. Attends, hold on. I can't see. This is Miyagi Prefecture, huh? Okay. Above... Um, <laughs> above uh, Fukushima. So I'd say it's about probably 300 kilometers up north. And I found really... It's really funny the information about uh, this... Uh, Mika, Mika, Migaki Ichigo. Ichigo in Japanese means uh, strawberry. In French we say uh, fraise. Ah non, chigawa. <laughs> I was trying to touch my uh, the panel. It's not working. And so this brand, it's written here, Mi Migaki Ichigo. It's made only in this uh, Miyagi prefecture. And they say that, so blah, 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 obviously they are producing the top quality uh, strawberries, but they say it is edible jewels. <laughs> so I am going to eat a jewel in a bottle. I definitely need to get the, um, the Migaki strawberry, I mean the fresh one, right? Voila. See, these are pure jewels. <laughs> this is so funny, the marketing, you know? <laughs> Look at this. Like, I bet just one like that is probably something like seven or eight dollars, you know? V voila. Okay. And now, I'm not going to, okay, just, I'm just going to show you how they uh, present their mousse. In French, means mousse, sparkling. Voila. Very nice angle on this picture. No, I didn't nap after my French toast, guys. I've been working. <laughs> I try to work before eating because after I eat and drink, you know, I feel tired. So I cleaned and... Um, and worked a little so now I deserve this aperitif and I'm not going to wait any longer because I don't want it to get hot so let's open it it's not cold here uh, today it's a very warm day you can look outside if you want voila and you have uh, Lisa ah, no, attends. Lisa is uh, voila checking out on me she's my little uh, director she's directing this pro this uh, program attends attends bébé voilà nice weather i i have uh, stopped the um, well, okay go okay good attends back to me <laughs> no don't worry I, I know how to open a bottle so but yes yeah just, just in case voila i usually open uh, sparkling you know champagne a cava i drink a lot of cava too because i think you know champagne is expensive sometimes so cava you can find very good uh, value cavas um in japan uh no it's not 
It's snowing in the north of Japan. Oh, I have a glass, a wine glass, because I like to drink sparkling in wine glasses too. Because I think that um, when you drink champagne in the, you know, long, thin champagne glasses, voila, nice um, cloud coming out of it. I think you can feel more the flavor when you drink sparkling out of a wine glass, large glass like that. This is why I am, oh my God, this smells so much of strawberry already. <laughs> How am I going to drink this thing? I like real alcohol, you know? <laughs> okay, please enjoy the, I'd say it's kind, it's uh, orangish. It has a salmon color. Can you see it? Voila. Does it look yummy? We straight from the bottle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to up close it with this champagne. Voila. I will explain this afterwards. Okay. Santé. Let's try this. Uh, yes, this is definitely strawberry and it's uh, like sweet it's it smells like sweet really sweet ripe strawberry Sante guys oh, this is so strong the smell <laughs> mm -mm. oh my this is sweet and Wow, I didn't expect it to be so strong. It really has, it's like, it's aged. This is really interesting because it's sweet, but also powerful, like an aged wine. You know those uh, Burgundy, Burgundy, Bourgogne wines, when they get, um, the Chardonnay gets aged? It, ha it has really, I think, a, a deep taste. And that reminds me of uh, this kind of wine. Even if it's uh, sweet and I'm, you know, I'm a real alcoholic, so I don't like sweet wines, but this is really good. And so the taste is, yes, it's sweet, but uh, it has, uh, it's really well balanced. So the sweetness doesn't remain on the palate. Uh, what remains, the aftertaste is from the beginning, the attack and up to the end, it's really that nice uh, strawberry-like taste and maybe it has some orange hint. So I think this is, um, uh, it is a good surprise to taste this. Let me get another sip. Yeah, the, oh my God, the smell is so strong. Yeah, it's uh, it's really f a full-bodied, I think, um, sparkling, but kind of easy to drink because it has a nice acidity. So, I don't know if you like. Uh, sweet wines, but this could be it's I think an elegant sparkling and I think it's really well made. You can taste that, you can feel that it's um, a very high quality wine. It's really well made. So Stan, know your question and no, it's not as sweet as ice wine or for example, you know, in close to Bordeaux, we have Sauternes. Those are really heavy, I think, on the palate. The, I mean, if you drink, uh, ice wine can be, uh, can, can be not that sweet, but um, Sauternes, sometimes it really stays on the palate and if you drink Sauternes, you can't drink anything else. But this is kind of, it's okay as an aperitif. And uh, I think that actually, it could go well also with uh, fish like salmon. 
the alcohol content is 12 degrees we can check out the label if you want to i'm going to go behind the camera because if not i can't see anything can you see i don't hold on a second uh yeah so it's the name migaki ichigo musu in uh, it's a french word <laughs> and here we have uh, the content of alcohol 12 degrees and it's interesting because it's this bottle um is not 75 centi uh, um, 750 it's 720 milliliters voila and uh, what they say is that it's fresh i agree it's fruity i agree too well this is a strawberry wine and so and they say it's medium bodied okay I would say full body because it really, you know, when I drank it, it really filled me up with all the flavors. Um, but okay, medium to full body. So again, the brand is Migaki Ichigo. I will put everything in the description. The des description and uh, voila, Musu. 100 the strawberry sparkling grown in Yamamoto. Yamamoto is the area in uh, Miyagi prefecture. What I will do is I will put a simple description with the link of that company because they have all the explanations oops, in, in English and uh, it's written that this product is sold only in Japan. <laughs> not too <laughs> i know i know that john has a copyright and we've owned in japan but sometimes we have to use that expression right so i put the link and um, i think that uh, sending wine abroad will be kind of heavy and that would cost a lot of money but someday i think i will i, I will start my uh my uh, basket gift baskets so maybe not with wine but with uh, japanese products so i'm going to put this in my uh, wine cooler that i got at vinexpo do you know vinexpo it's a wine event uh this is this is it for the wine so if you were just interested in the strawberry sparkling you can change channels because now i'm just going to show you the lovely almond Marcona almonds that John, for those who followed, who he bought this for me in Trader Joe's, and I think it's really good, and it should match this. Uh, mm. It should match this um, strawberry thing. Mm. <laughs> Thanks for staying. Also, I wanted to show you the. Um, it's okay, but I think that definitely this I would have with uh, some um, salmon sashimi and other, you know, sashimi, like fatty um, fish would go well with this um, strawberry sparkling. But to finish, I wanted to show you the saucisson that I brought back from the Pyrenees that uh, my friend Kiki, for those who saw the video, um, this is a black pig, black pork uh, saucisson. It's the, the, sauci the black pork is called uh, Le Noir de Bigorre. <laughs> Bigorre is the region, voila. And I'm going to show you the name because, you know, just the pronunciation, I know it's hard. Noir de Bigorre. Bigorre is the area. Bigorre's black. Why? Because it's a black pork. I say that it's the French version of the Spanish Iberico. Let's put the glass here well, to have a nice... <laughs> So here it is. Okay, let, let me cut a, a slice. I started eating it when I came back. 
this is uh, I think that Lisa she smelled she could smell the this saucisson so it's um, it's sausage it's a hard sausage because you can they make it dry you know like this and it goes well uh, with the uh, red wine usually but this can can go can match this uh, because it's aperitif during aperitif I think that basically we can eat anything tadakimasu I'm going to show you the inside again can you see how dark the color is voila why because this is I think a hundred percent. In France, when they make saucisson, sometimes they would put only eighty percent of meat. But um, this one, it's a hundred percent of meat. This is why it is so tasty, and the color is so dark. I think. <laughs> Hold on a second. I want to show you a nice slice. Voila. Yeah. And there is some skin around that you can take off. I mean, when you have babies like me, I like, I don't give them too much uh, human food because you know, it's not good for their health, but um, um, sometimes a little because life would, would be too boring, I think, for them if I did it only dog food don't you think and life is short so um also the other uh specificity of uh, noir de bigorre the black pork of pyrenee is that like iberico you can eat the fat the fat is dietitians also say that the fat this is a fat that will not give you bad cholesterol so it's all like no remorse <laughs> eating this thing because it's it i think it's just the real stuff right made out of good ingredients so this is why it's not bad for the health and i just can't stop eating this this is so good and what we do french people here here it is again the better, the French butter. I don't like to to talk when my mouth is full. Good question, Jean. How to keep saucisson? <laughs> All of a sudden, it's uh, you know. Attends, too close. Thank you. Okay, okay, let's go. Tiens, Lisa, tiens. Okay, voila. And now it's okay. I ate my bite. <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> How to keep saucisson? My friend Kiki and uh, other, you know, like people who really know their product, he explained that what is best is, I'm just going to show you the paper. I put it in paper like this. You put it in the paper and in the refrigerator once open i mean and you know i bring it back it's uh, air vacuumed and then i put it uh, when i open it i put it in a paper like this you wrap it and put it in the vegetable compartment of your uh, fridge this is how you will be able to keep your saucisson at his its best condition for about a month voila and uh, so, yes, I wanted to show you how we like to eat our saucisson. Of course, we eat it like this, but also 
with the butter. Here is Nalita San's bread again. I couldn't help it. I had to toast. One slice. What we do is that we just butter some bread. Well, usually we don't eat a pandemic during meals like this. It's for to make a croque monsieur or French bread like this morning. It's, uh, this is uh, the bread I got from Esquis 5 the other day, like uh, on Friday. Oh, yes, the Ikemen chef Nalita San. And he puts a little bit of potato in his um, pandemic. And I thought this this would go well with my uh, saucisson because I don't have any other bread and this would go better uh, with the saucisson than the um, hotel bread I used this morning for the um, French toast. So voila, we, you know, it can be baguette, uh, pain de campagne, just butter it a little, it First, we eat the saucisson. <laughs> we can eat also at the same time. Some people, this is what they do. Mm -hmm. Charlie, these are coming. So I like to, when I'm almost done, you know, take a bite of bread. This is the French way, huh? it's rustic. Huh? Là. This really makes me feel like uh, I need some uh, red wine, you know. Mm, mm. The bread and butter definitely adds a good taste. Yeah, maybe. We, I should eat, be eating this maybe with John, but uh, we live I think he's in, in the mountain still and we live like on opposite sides of the city so we never go to each other's houses but anyway also you can make you know like a little sandwich like these people sometimes they just put they like to put their saucisson on the bread and eat it everything at the same time because the it's just a good balance. It, it, it goes well together. Voila. So I think I'm going to enjoy my meal now, which is uh, probably going to be uh, made out of this. Uh, I like aperitif. Just very often when I'm home like this, I just have this kind of stuff. It's not very balanced, but it's good for my mind. Um, Stan, I hope you notice what I have on my table. <laughs> Very cute uh, poster. Voila. And uh, so I'm going to say uh, bye bye and uh, see you soon for another uh, tasting or food hunt in Tokyo. Voila. Thanks for joining, and I will put the description um, and the link to this Ichigo. Uh, strawberry sparkling I will put the link okay voila merci beaucoup and uh, see you soon merci bye bye bye